probability that x equals s is given by, in other words, the probability that we get s successes is given by this nice little compact formula, which initially looks complicated, but it does the trick for us. It saves us all that time from having to draw this long, long, uh, painful looking table. Um, this does it all for us. We just need to know what the probabilities are. And remember, this whole thing simplifies to this uh, whole thing right here. Okay, so um, let's find the expected value now. We were asked to find the expected number of light bulbs in a four pack. So what I have going on here in this Excel spreadsheet is uh, what we what we saw on the other page, the probabilities, and then memory expected value ends up being the val the outcome times its probability plus the outcome times its probability. So here we have listed zero times point four zero nine six equals zero. One times point four zero nine six is that. And then remember for expected value those get added up. So the expected value in this case is point eight. Um, so expected value of x from the previous page is equal to 0 0.8. Now, we won't prove this here, but n in this situation was 4. The probability of success was 0 0.2. And it just so turns out that if I take n times p, I get 4 times 0 0.2, which guess what that is? 0 0.8. So the expected value of x in this case was just 0 0.8. Um, excuse me, n times p, which is 0 0.8. So we just established a couple really important results. Okay, so what 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 actually happened here? What do we call this whole process? Um, this whole thing that we just discovered, this formula is, and for this whole distribution, is called a probability, a binomial probability distribution, and that function that we just created. Um, is called so that we have what we've dis discovered here is a binomial probability distribution and that function we just came up with is known as a binomial probability density function or a PDF almost like the file name PDF so what do we have to assume in order to be able to, to conduct this well suppose we, we call this whole the the n the n trials, we call that an experiment with n trials. So we have to have a fixed number of trials. Each trial can result in only one of two possible values, a success or a failure. Well, that was the case. We could either have a defective or not defective. So it has to be a, a binary situation. The probability of success in each trial is p. It is always the same. It doesn't change from trial to trial. In that case, we had a 20% defective rate regardless of the other light bulbs, which is the fourth necessity that we need to meet, the fourth assumption in order to be able to use this. Each trial is independent of all other trials. That is, the outcome of one trial in no way affects the outcome of any other trial. Then the experiment, if these four assumptions are met and we need to check off each of these four assumptions one by one, then we have a binomial experiment and the probability of x equals s successes can be calculated by, well, hey, there, there's our formula. Um, so that, we, we, we've just discovered a really important result. And if you have a binomial distribution, um, the expected value of x is also what we've just discovered, is n times p. Um, one important thing to note here is that if you added up all of these probabilities, they would sum to 1. So the probability that x equals 0 successes plus 1 success plus 2 down the line has to sum to 1. Because remember, all of these possibilities got bucketed into one of these five categories. Um, and if it doesn't, that means we've omitted something. If these don't add up to 1, something's missing, or we made a calculation mistake. One last example we'll consider here is uh, suppose that you have a bank ha that has three new security cameras installed. The bank's concern is that since the cameras rotate to capture activity throughout the bank's interior, the doors may not be in sight at all times. Each camera is such that the front door is in the video frame 85% of the time, independently of the movement of the other cameras. Find the probability distribution of x equals the number of cameras capturing the front door at any one time. Okay, so does the question we have right away is, is this a binomial experiment? Well, you probably guess that it is, but it doesn't have to be if it doesn't meet the assumptions. 